video I want to show you how to remove this piston from inside this drum for the automatic transmission clutch and steel liners inside this drum this is the piston there is a outer ring and a inner rubber o-ring for sealing this piston in its chamber during the process of rebuilding the transmission, the seal on the piston is highly recommend for servicing and replacing. What must be done here is this plate has to be compressed, pushing it down, releasing that C-clip for releasing the spring and the piston inside the drum. What we have here, this is PVC pipe that was cut down to size. Just want to place this here. The simplest way would be to get a bolt like this, passing it through. We want to put a plate on the top and a plate on the bottom, using the screw to turn it down for compressing this plastic against the spring for the piston to release this C-clip. But since we don't have a plate for placing this bolt through, we will have to use the C-clamp. At this point, it is not necessary to wear a latex rubber glove for assembling transmission internal parts because the likeliness of pieces of the latex glove remaining inside of the transmission component will affect transmission performance. Some time compressed air can be used for removing this piston, but you want to rotate it in the drum, freeing up the seal, flipping it over and dropping it on the table 
that piston will be able to drop out of its cavity. So that's it. This is the piston that we want. On the outside we see a lip seal that is applied with hydraulic pressure for increasing its seal with the outside diameter of the piston. On the inside is a another rubber o-ring seal. So these two seal is what contain the chamber inside of the drum that's inside here. You see how it's contaminated. All this has to be cleaned out. In that area is where hydraulic fluid will be applied for pushing that piston up against the clutch and the steel liner. You see the hole inside there on the back? That's where the hydraulic pressure is applied. The fluid into this chamber pushing this piston forward locking the liner so that action is back and forth because you have the spring that will push it back. When we take a look at the bottom of this drum we will notice a flat stock where the piston outer lip seal move up and down aggregating the surface. So it is always best to use a power steering fluid with stop leak to condition new and used seals. Before installation, we want to take a close look at the lip of the seal where it meets that flat stock for the drum. That lip must be fitted into its seal cavity for the piston to be pressed down flush with the seal not folding back. We will use a pick or a wire for setting the lip of the seal in the cavity of the flat stock for pressing that piston down square into its chamber. With the piston spring compressed, we want to replace the C-clip for retaining it under pressure. A wire must be used for checking the channel that retains the C-clip before it can be placed into position. Positioning of that C-clip is very important that it lock in the groove on the tube and seat it perfectly into the upper spring retainer. Sometime the assembly will require additional compressing for fitting that C-clip into the groove onto the tube. This is the position of the C-clip for retaining the piston and its spring. This is the position of the lip seal where the two arrow is pointing down for sealing the piston in its chamber. With the C-clip retaining the piston spring, it is now time to remove the C-clamp compression tool and check that C-clip for a secure fixture in its groove. Now it's time to reassemble the drum with its wave plate steel liner and pre-soak clutch liner. The transmission is cool and lubricated by transmission oil. This oil is required to make its way through essential passageway for functioning action inside the transmission. Maintaining a clean transmission by using compressed air for blowing foreign contaminants out of holes in passageway is essential for transmission proper function. During the process of assembling the transmission is essential that all the passageway, like on the outside of the drum, remain clear of foreign contaminant 
on the back of this drum, you will notice there are hydraulic input passageways that apply pressure for applying the clutch onto the steel liner for locking the drum. So you're going to notice in those two corners, that's right here, you're going to see there is two ball valve. And what happens that with those is that when the piston is moved back, or down by this spring, the oil from that chamber will purge out of those ball valve hole, placing the transmission fluid in this area where the clutch is, dispensing itself from these holes on the outside. This piston return spring must be compressed with limited movement to prevent its pour from bending and losing its spring action. To the center of this drum we will notice a bronze bushing with a swipe groove for swiping oil during rotation to reduce friction. This bearing may sometime need replacement if it shows damage or excessive wear and tear. With the clutch and brake liner assembled it is necessary to check the clearance between the clutch pack and the liner and its retainer clip, maintaining the factory specification. The hydraulic oil pressure inside the clutch assembly piston chamber may vary between 250 to 350 PSI and should be checked with the vehicle manufacturer manual for accurate specification. In our next video, we're going to take a look at replacing the inner and outer lip seal for the drum clutch assembly. Thank you for watching this video and see you again for the automatic transmission rebuild on the Nissan Frontier D22 2004.